Examination of Jugular Venous Pressure Jugular venous pressure, or the JVP, is an important parameter that gives insight into the fluid status and the central venous pressure of the patient. It is to be examined, especially in cardiac, renal, and respiratory cases. JVP gives an indirect measure of the right atrial pressure, that is, the central venous pressure since right jugular veins are in direct continuity, with the superior vena cava, and the right atrium. Among the jugular veins, the right internal jugular vein is chosen over the external jugular vein, as it directly connects to the right atrium, without any intervening valves. Do not confuse the internal jugular vein with the external jugular vein, as it is a more accessible, and a less reliable source. The external jugular vein is superficial to sternocleidomastoid, while internal jugular vein is deep to sternocleidomastoid. JVP, is examined under the following headings, level, waveforms, hepatojugular reflux, venous hum, and respiratory variations. Procedure for estimation of JVP level. The patient is reclining back at an angle of 45 degrees. Head is turned towards the left. Pen light can be pointed at a 45 degree angle, towards the midline of the neck. The highest pulsatal point, of the distended internal jugular vein is identified. One ruler is kept at this level, parallel to the ground. And another ruler is kept perpendicular, to the first at the sternal angle, or the angle of Louis. The distance from the sternal angle to the intersection is measured. Calculation and interpretation of JVP levels. The height of JVP is calculated by adding the distance measured, plus the constant distance from the midpoint of the right atrium, to the sternal angle, which is 5 cm of water. Normal JVP is generally 6 to 8 cm of water. Mean venous pressure of less than 5 cm of water, reflex hypovolemia and greater than 9 cm of water reflex impaired cardiac filling and volume overload. If you cannot determine the JVP, report as JVP not visualized, rather than, no JVP which implies that the JVP was visualized and is not elevated. Some of the causes of raised JVP are right ventricular failure, constrictive pericarditis, cardiac tamponade, tricuspid stenosis, superior vena cava obstruction, hyperkinetic circulatory state, increased blood volume, and renal failure, JVP waveforms. Normal JVP waveforms consist of three positive and two negative pulse waves. The positive waves are A, C, and V. And the negative waves are X and Y. The abnormalities in the waves will be discussed in detail in the upcoming videos. Hepatojugular reflux. This is elicited by applying pressure over the right upper quadrant of the abdomen for 10 seconds. Normally, there is a rise in JVP, followed by a fall. If there is a sustained elevation JVP for more than one minute, then the hepatojugular reflux is positive. The abnormal findings are as follows. Hepatojugular reflux is positive in constrictive pericarditis. Hepatojugular reflux is false negative in Budd-Chiari syndrome, IVC obstruction on pressure. Venous hum. It is heard using light pressure with the bell of the stethoscope. Cervical venous hum is a continuous machinery-like noise heard over IGV. Loudest in diastole during inspiration. It is accentuated by turning the head away from the side of examination. Usually a physiological phenomenon seen in children and pregnancy, unusual venous hum is noted in hyperkinetic states, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, beriberi, and intracranial AV fistula. Respiratory variations. Normally, JVP is lowered on inspiration. Positive Cosmel sign is the paradoxical increase in JVP on inspiration. It is seen in constrictive pericarditis. Basidia med. The easiest and fastest way to take advanced clinical history.